Today I'm taking a closer look at the Z-Pax Arc Zip Ultra Backpack. Arc Zip Ultra is the latest in a series of backpacks which have been around for many years and they are known for their lightweight design, durable materials, and versatile functionality. Hi, I'm Eric Cufferin and I'll be your guide throughout this video. I've hiked over 2,000 miles with the previous generation of the Arc Zip Backpack. Over seven years, this green pack has been worn for countless trips ranging from the mountains of Yosemite, hot dusty deserts in Joshua Tree, to getting poured on like you wouldn't believe in Iceland, and every possible condition in between. This pack is still going strong. However, the lure of shiny new gear and a $50 off sale led me to purchase this pack in December. I've been using this pack now three months, and I'm going to share with you what I've learned so far. This video is going to be focused on the pack itself, but if you're interested, check out my channel for a video where I share with you what gear I'm going to be carrying in the upcoming 2023 season. Without further ado, let's get started. So, you didn't think I was going to give this gear talk from my office, did you? Alright, I'm out here at the Forest of Nicene Marks. Had to cross over that stream, hike up some hills, and I'm here in the Twisted Grove. Now I'm going to talk to you about this pack. First of all, let's talk about the weight. The pack weighs only two pounds, making it one of the lightest packs on the market. This makes it perfect for long hikes, overnight trips, or multi-day backpacking adventures. I originally bought the Arc Hall Zip in 2017 because I was planning to hike the John Muir Trail. I had this other pack and I really needed to drop my base weight. The previous pack was a Osprey Atmos AG and it weighed over six pounds. And so by switching to this pack, I dropped my base weight by over four pounds. That's some serious weight. All right, let's talk about the features. The pack is made with ultra fabric, which is a high performance fabric, and it's super durable and abrasion resistant. And all of the seams have been taped, making it highly water resistant. The pack has a roll top enclosure in addition to the zippers. This makes it really easy to get things in and out of the pack, as well as adjusting the actual size of the pack, depending upon how much stuff you have in there at that time. It has a really spacious main compartment, as well as this back zipper pocket. That one is really handy for keeping things that I need to access throughout the day that I don't need to have right in front of me, like maybe my first aid kit or some of my small electronics. And because, you know, it's protected, it's got that same fabric here, your stuff's going to be protected and dry. On the lower side are two pockets for water bottles or other things. I typically keep on the left hand side my things like my poles or my tripod or stuff like that. And then on the other side, I keep my water bottle because I find that I can reach with my right hand a little bit easier back there. I also have these top side pockets. These are really handy for keeping certain items that I wanna have easier access to, like my wind shirt or my puffy or my solar panel. And having them there gives me the ability to get them out quickly when I'm doing short stop. On the front side here, I also have the belt pouches and shoulder pouches. These are really good for keeping things that you need to have access to quickly and you don't wanna have to take your pack off to get to them. Things such as snacks or gloves or other things like that. And then this pouch, shoulder pouch here fits a cell phone and it also has kind of a little webbing pouch on the front that I keep chapstick or other things like that in there. I've got the Samsung Galaxy Plus and this fits that phone perfectly in here. On the other side, sometimes I use a Z-Pax shoulder pouch that can fit like a 16 ounce Nalgene or just other stuff, some stuff like a point and shoot camera. But sometimes when I wanna bring my mirrorless camera like to hike out here for this, I put on my peak clip so I can easily take those on and off just by you know, removing this little strap here and then putting that on and off. Two other things that I've got, I've got the ice axe loops on the back here and then I also have the V-top strap. I've never really tried the single strap, 
but with the V-top strap, I feel more confident that my tent isn't gonna slide in or out or shift around. I keep my tent on the top here and that keeps it nice and snug and doesn't move around at all. There's also a number of adjustment points on the pack, like in the shoulders or here on the back for uh, lifting the load. There's also quite a bit of foam here on the shoulder straps and on the waist belt, but other than that, there's really no foam within this area. One of the things that I like about the belt is that it has two little clips here that the straps go through, and that makes it really easy to dial in and kind of adjust the top and the bottom of your belt strap so that it's firmly on and you can hike comfortably. Okay, last but not least, the arc shape. So the pack has an arc shape and it may be slightly difficult to see from this angle, but the pack has an arc shape and when it's on your back, that allows the air to flow through here. This keeps the pack off your back and keeps your body, body temperature lower. So you, your back isn't hot and you don't sweat as much. This is really important because it keeps you from getting dehydrated and it also just enables you to hike more comfortably. It's really important to not sweat, especially in the winter time or when it's just generally cold because you could end up getting hypothermia. Okay, so what's changed with this pack? I've really only noticed two things, kind of major and then two really minor things. First of all, the biggest change, you know, is that fabric, the Ultra fabric. I went with the Ultra 100. It only comes in gray with the Ultra 100. If you want to have the black color, then that's gonna actually be the Ultra 200. I actually hike a lot in the sunny places that are hot and generally wear lighter colors and I wanna also keep my pack cool. So having a black colored pack, I believe might make the pack hotter. And then if I have things inside there like chocolate or whatever, maybe that's just gonna melt sooner. The other reason which I like this gray color is that it has kind of this two-tone look to it. So it has just, I think, a little bit, you know, more of a attractive appearance having that, you know, two-tone look. The Ultra 100 fabric is a little bit thinner than the Ultra 200 fabric. However, it still should have really phenomenal abrasion resistance and durability, especially compared to the old pack, which has lasted me a really long time. In any case, it also has the Ultra 200 on the bottom, so it's gonna have that extra protection in the places where you absolutely need it, especially here like on the side pockets where you're gonna be setting it down and scraping up against things pretty often. I treat my gear pretty gently. I never had any problems with the grid stop fabric, so I'm hopeful that this will be just as durable, if not more. Okay, second major thing about this pack that's changed from the old pack that I had is it has now the stays, the carbon fiber stays are now in a permanent arc. In the old pack, I had to pull on this webbing here to push then the arc into its position. That was okay, it worked all right. Um, I noticed sometimes that the arc would somehow get pressed in and I think that was possibly because of heavy loads or maybe this webbing became loose from just a lot of hiking or moving around. So the fact that it stays in that permanent arc position, I'm hopeful that you know that will just keep it in that shape, that arc shape better on my back and keep me cool and hiking more comfortably. Okay, third thing that's changed about this pack, and this one's really minor, there's no hydration port here. So if you're somebody who absolutely needs a hydration port, this might not be the pack for you. However, if you are somebody who uses a hydration bladder, I would recommend you consider alternative solutions because a hydration bladder can be really difficult to keep clean and use when you're out in the back country. So maybe consider something else like a Be Free, which is what I use. Okay, last thing that's changed about this pack, and this one's super minor, they moved the logo patch from down here to up here. Now, this might seem really trivial, and I'm not sure yet if it's gonna be a problem for me, but when it was down here, I didn't really notice it in the sense that it was at the bottom of the pack and when I loaded all the things in the bottom there, I never had any problems with it. Well, with the patch being up in this area, I'm concerned that possibly when I have a lot of things in here and it's jammed really full, that those things might be brushing up against this waterproof backing that is on the backside of this patch. Because the patch is sewn through the fabric, that could possibly leak if there wasn't this waterproof backing on here. And, you know, these do hold on here pretty well. It's very sticky. I, you know, don't think it's gonna come off anytime soon, but 
over time that might be something that I need to replace that little waterproof patch over time. Waste pouches, there's also a similar patch on there which my original pack did not have that on there. Again, I haven't really noticed a problem with either of these patches, but it's something that's different. And other than that, everything else is really the same. I'm guessing that they moved the patch from down here to up here so that when people are hiking on the trail and things down here just cover that up, that they want people to see that this is a Z-Pax pack, you know, uh, so it's for brand awareness, I would presume. There's really no functional reason to move it from here to there. I'll tell you though, the people at the marketing department might be a little disappointed because I put my InReach Mini right here and when it's sitting, it just covers that up perfectly. Okay, so am I happy with the Z-Pax Arc Hall Ultra? Say that three times fast. Z-Pax Arc Hall Ultra. Z-Pax Arc Hall Zip Ultra. Z-Pax Arc Zip Ultra. So am I happy with the Z-Pax Arc Zip Ultra? Yes, I love it. It's incredibly light, it fits all my stuff. It's got the zipper back pouch here. All the opening compartments are really easy to use. The different storage places, the belts, the shoulder straps, the different loops, tie-ons, all of that really helps me to be able to organize all my stuff and fit everything on or in this pack in a way that really aligns to my hiking style. I can't imagine changing to a different pack at this point. I think this is the best pack money can buy. So in conclusion, this pack is a great pack for anyone who's looking for a lightweight, durable pack with a lot of versatility. Whether you're planning an epic through hike, just multi-day adventures, or you wanna get started with overnight trips, or you just do a lot of really long hikes, well, definitely consider this. This could be the pack for you. So that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed learning more about this pack. If you've got any questions or comments, put them down in the comment box and be sure to like and subscribe to catch more outdoor gear and adventure videos. Thanks.